Hello there, welcome to Genesis Models. My name is Bobby Waldron and welcome to another video. This video is going to be um, sort of a little bit of a tutorial, but it's going to be a lot of me just talking. Um, and what this video is all about, it's about the manufacturers um, and the kits that we buy uh, and what to sort of look out for and what I think of them because um, I did get someone comment saying it would be nice to know what I think of all the different manufacturers out there and whatnot. Um, and I think at the same time we can sort of um, make this a bit of a buying guide as well. So before I go off and start going through the list of manufacturers out there, sorry if I miss some, um, just sort of a bit of a buying guide when buying kits. Now, kits out there, we have um, loads of different manufacturers, loads of different kits, um, and probably one of the big things to do when buying a kit is not to judge a book by its cover, right? Because um, the pr one of the problems really when it comes to manufacturers and kits is they rebox the hell out of certain kits, right? So what I mean by this is you could have a kit that is, I don't know, maybe, you know, built in 1970 so shall we say it was nicely new tool tooled 1970 now going back into the 1970 with kits back then were um, probably not of the best fit not of the best detail they have stuff like raised panel lines shall we say those are pretty sort of nasty they were pretty horrible they made them raise panel lines because it was cheaper to manufacture that way and you know what they was pretty sort of totally un unrealistic because you don't have these raised panel lines sticking out on the real aircraft um, some do and you know modern um, aircraft do sort of represent that now but way back then yeah you had all these horrible things and um, but what manufacturers will do is they can sort of go off and take an old kit put it in a nice pretty new box probably go off and put some nice new looking decals in there so at least that can kind of go well um, we haven't copied the last kit completely you know this kit's got some different markings in there and maybe you could sort of paint it a different scheme and stuff so it kind of says it's almost new but it's not it's the same mold in there and that's the problem you gotta look out for now um, they they have tended to stop doing it really old kits like those raised panel lines I mean you know it's sort of a thing of the past now but they they are still out there um, but you do have to watch out for old kits being reboxed and you kind of get in what you didn't really think you were getting so to get around this it is a little bit tricky but you, you do have to put your research into it um, I do know there's a, there's a website I do like called Scalemates and that's scalemates.com by the way. Um, really nice site where basically they've made this massive database of all the kits that's ever been released and they basically show you the date um, that it was released and if it's a rebox or not, if that particular kit's a new tool and everything. Really nice database where you can sort of you know find out what's in your box so to say. So if you kind of see a kit that's really old, like you know. 1980 1970 or something and it's got a nice shiny box but scale mate says it's like 1982 or whatever you kind of know that it's been reboxed um, it also will sort of show you um, in a nice little sort of um, area if you scroll down it'll show you you know that particular kit how many times it's been reboxed and what the box art looks like and everything a really good way to find out um, you know sadly it's one of these things you could you know you do need to sort of put the research in um, but at the same time you know you've also got things like Genesis models you know we do in box reviews so it's good to sort of you know if you're looking at a kit you know search the internet search Genesis models and you'll potentially find somebody uh, somebody somewhere or me have gone off and done an ink box review where we've opened up the box and we show you the plastic and then you can see what's in there uh, but yeah it's one of these things you do want to sort of make sure you put your research before you buy kits because I know personally me and a lot of people we brought loads of kits in the past opened them up and they've ended up just going on the shelf or we throw them back up on eBay or something because they're really really terrible um, next thing is cost now cost is not really something to worry about I do find that in scale modeling 
kits are normally you know priced quite nicely you normally get what you pay for you know um, you do have to keep in mind scale though uh, because you could you, you know you're going to be paying less for a 170 second scale than you are a 130 second scale right it's it's one of them but generally the more you pay the the, the you know the better quality and the better the kit normally is uh, apart from shall we say the um, the far east you know tamiya has those kind of like um, japanese taiwan chinese companies right um i know there is sort of like a bit of an import thing going on there so they seem to cost a little bit more because of, of of that kind of like importing them over to europe and everything uh but but yeah generally you know the, the price is normally all right with when it comes to, to scale models one thing i just want to quickly look at before we start looking at the manufacturers is um picking the right um kit as well um one thing is is you know all these different manufacturers i'm going to list here don't do every single aircraft or every single tank or every single car right if you want to do a particular aircraft say for example um just done an fa18 hornet over here you you don't really want to go off and go well you know people say hazagawi do really good kits so let's get the hazagawi one because Ravel does one as well, uh, and some other manufacturers do them as well. You kind of want to also go off and research what's the best FA-18 kit out there as well. So um, when you do buy kits, a lot of research. I always research everything. I research it on Scalemates when it was new tooled. I go off and read loads and loads of forums on the internet. You know, what's the best FA-18? What's the best Spitfire out there? Um, and you do generally do get a lot of people discussing that subject matter and they do kind of say, well, you know, Hazagari does the best FA-18 out there. Um, you know, it, it's one of these things, you know, you just got to do some research. So, starting a list, not in, not in any particular order um, Hazagawa now Hazagawa do do some really really good kits um, however um, I do think they've kind of lacked over the years you go back 10 years or 20 years people would say they do the best kits out there the fits are supposed to be really good surface details really good and everything and yeah going back 10 20 years you know they pretty much were the best out there but i do feel that um these past 10 20 years they just reboxing the hell out of their kits and you're not really seeing much new stuff released by them which is a shame that they're not really kind of you know releasing new stuff um and they're just box art box art put new decals in new decals in um you know and, and it's just one of those things that they they seem to be doing right now but in saying that as well their kits were really good go back 10 20 years ago that they they're still good now as i say as i just mentioned fa18 probably the best one you can go out there and buy if you want to do an fa18 148 scale um you know but again they just kind of rebox everything next up is tamiya tamiya is quite quite big one of the big companies out there they've got a massive range of kits and you know they are releasing new kits and yet yeah, their kits are pretty good as well they do fit really well um they are um good surface detail i know um over the past couple of years the past decade they have been releasing some sublime kits um one of them being well several of them really is they've they've released a nice couple of 130 second scales you know we've got the p51d mustang zero spitfire you know and, and a load of others and these have been new release kits they are expensive but again you get what you pay for and you know if you want to do a super 130 second scale um Tamiya Spitfire, that absolutely amazing. It's right down there. There is a step by step on it. Um, absolutely amazing kit. Generally, they are good. Um, but again, um, another thing, another little tip when buying kits is again, the manufacturers, you could have a good manufacturer, but even good manufacturers have their odd crap 
kit. Right, so as much as I can say, Tammy is a good manufacturer, the good fit, surface de detail and everything, they still do have the odd kit that's a bit pants. So again, always research. Next up is Hobby Boss. Hobby Boss, um, they are, they are good, but without their, but they do have a couple of flaws here and now. I do find they are generally do fit really nice, but then you can have the odd nasty fit issue in a place. Um, their surface detail is generally really good, but then you know it can be now and then in a slight place. Uh, they they are good. I wouldn't say the best. They're not bad but they're still really really good um, but I do find their prices are say better than buying a Tamiya kit or a Hazagoi kit um, we also have Trumpeter which is pretty much the same as Hobby Boss really um, they do 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 some good kits as well um, then we have Airfix Airfix is, is I, I do like Airfix they're not shall we say the best in surface detail and quality but they're not bad. Um, ta uh, Air Airfix, I do remember, they used to be really bad. Um, but then we had the recession, recession in 2008, which Airfix did get into some trouble. They did get end up getting brought by Humbro. And ever since then, they've had a good kick up the bum. And they are producing some nice, nice kits. They always put some um, really nice decals now in their kits. They always seem to use the um, cartograph decals, which are, I think, up there as one of the best set of decals in the world. And them always using them now, which is really, really good. Their surface detail, as I say, isn't the best. Their fit isn't the best but you know it's not bad you do you do end up building a nice model you do end up having some good surface detail but um you might have a fit issue here and there and you know you might want to sort of you know generally with airfix they don't hardly put any rivets on there so you might want to make some of your rivets of your own but in saying that as well they are not overpriced they are um always releasing brand spanking new tools every year you know maybe like three or four or five brand spanking new tools each and every year so it's it's a nice manufacturer to watch because they're always producing new stuff and they're always producing new stuff that is um not your typical build because i know a lot of manufacturers out there you know everyone does a spitfire um, everyone does a p51d mustang everyone does all these popular builds but airfix they do sort of do the kind of builds that you don't normally see in other manufacturers i.e they'll do stuff like you know it's mainly sort of cold war um and sort of old like raf type stuff so we're talking like the Vulcan talking Buccaneer and um, and C C oh what was it now C Vixen or something I don't know but they do those kind of like nice sort of old Cold War stuff that you don't see from other manufacturers so they do do some sort of rarer sort of type aircraft as well we do have Eddard Eddard is one that I do actually like um, they have made some absolutely cracking kits. Um, one to mention is the 148 scale um, Spitfire. That Spitfire is absolutely sublime. It fits together like an absolute glove. Surface detail is what I like to call next generation. It is the best that is out there to offer right now. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, just cannot beat the surface detail on them. Same as the Tamiya 132nd Spitfires and, and that kind of series of, of, of aircraft. Um, absolutely stunning. Um, they, they do do, uh, the, the problem is they don't have a big range of scale models. You know, I mean, you could probably count on your fingers how many models they've got, which is a shame, but the ones they do have are generally really, really good. Um, and not only that, because they are, um, their, their main company focus is like photo etch, resin, and all that cool stuff. So when they released that Spitfire, absolutely gorgeous Spitfire 148 scale, they released all this absolutely gorgeous resin, gorgeous um, photo etch that went with it. So it's sort of like if you want to build a 148 scale Spitfire Mark 9, you have got absolutely everything to mech it into the most pucker Spitfire 
you could ever build, um, which is quite good. Prices aren't too bad as well. Um, but as I say, their range isn't very big. Although it might look like it's big, but they do do a lot of reboxing. Like, as I say, again, coming back to that Spitfire, it's um, been reboxed. Um, I can't even count how many times it's been reboxed. It's been reboxed millions of times. It's absolutely mental. Um, next up, um, Revell. Revell. Revell is, um, you know, they're a good manufacturer. They're not the best, but they're not the worst. They're normally their prices are quite good. You know, it's nice and affordable. They generally sort of, you know, they 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 fit good, but you know, you can have fit issues, surface detail. Again, it is good, but you can have issues. You know, it's it's uh, it's it's one of them. You, you're going to probably put a bit of work into the surface detail. You're probably going to be sorting out some fit issues, but you know, the kits are still good. You know, as I say, they're not the best, not the worst. Italy Air. Right, an Atelier um, is probably one of my least favorite manufacturers out there. They are cheap, but I don't really rate their kits. They, they, they're normally, the surface detail's kind of bad. Normally eject pin marks everywhere, flash everywhere. Um, they fit some kind of absolutely dog awful. I do tend to kind of avoid them. And if I do do them, I normally end up putting a lot of work into them, um, but you know that's the tally air yeah. um then really that was probably a lot of the sort of the big ones out there i've got a couple um maybe not so known um although there is academy academy they are um again they're a bit like revel actually you know they're good but you know they can have some issues but they're not bad um but we have these two manufacturers kind of like my new favorite manufacturers which is uh, ming models and takam if you like stuff like armored vehicles and that kind of a range of stuff they do some absolutely gorgeous tanks and armored vehicles they are pretty sort of um, stunning actually and they are sort of generally sort of new as well you know a lot of new tools out there and and absolutely gorgeous um, uh, models to 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 build we also have hong kong models now these are a bit of a different company because they are manufacturing some sort of outrageously sized um models right these are the ones that were um what's the one they've just built med it's the um, lancaster they've done a lancaster but they've done it in one thirty second scale so it's absolutely mad massive price tag you're probably talking two three hundred pounds to buy one but the, you know the wingspan is just absolutely mental. It's a massive model, uh, but would make such an awesome display piece if you forked out the money and actually built it. So they want to look out for AFV Club. They are a good one as well. Um, pr uh, yeah, yeah. Do you know what? I've I've seen a few of them. They are you know pretty nicely detailed and everything. They do go together quite well. They do focus on armored vehicles a lot. Uh, but yeah definitely a, a nice one to go off and buy we got dragon as well which is probably our last one dragon they are um a bit like shall we say has a gary but armored vehicle kind of wise they do do a lot of armored vehicles they do do a lot of reboxing um but you know they are pretty damn nice pretty accurate um and if you ever sort of search like the forums for what's the best tiger and something or something people generally kind of say dragon is pretty much the ones who produce the nicest ones um but i don't know they're getting a little bit old and not really producing much new stuff i haven't seen much new stuff and you know it's one of if they're kind of like has gary they're sort of being overtaken because they're just reboxing a lot uh, but that is your list um there's a load of other manufacturers out there um but really when it comes down to it you know really don't worry too much about the manufacturer think about the kit itself what do you want to build right and you've just got to put in the effort and the research to find out you know if you want to build an fa18 google 
what is the best FA18 in 148 scale and you'll pretty much find after maybe like half an hour an hour of searching reading the forums that people will be saying you know Hazegui does a better one than Ravel um, Hazegui is the better one to go but is the more expensive one to to go with um, and price wise as I say you know don't worry about price in general you are paying for what you, you are getting what you pay for but probably the biggest one is you know look at those inbox reviews you know I do loads and loads of inbox reviews there's loads of inbox reviews out there um, loads of videos you can go watch um, and it, it is just all about do your research but uh, if I was to go off and say what's my favorite manufacturer Oh, there's quite a few. I do like Eddard. In all honesty, I do like Eddard. It's a shame they don't do as a, a good range of kits, but if you want to do um, one of the kits they do, it's really, really nice to, to build one of them. I do like Airfix. I know Airfix, you know, they're not the best on surface detail or the fit. They're not the worst either. Um, but, you know, they, they're always releasing new stuff and they're interesting to keep an eye on. Their kits do look good and when you build them, they do look good. Uh, personally, I like to add a bit more surface detail just to jazz them up, but um, it's, it's a nice one. I do like the look of them. And as I've already mentioned, Ming models and TACAM, if you're into armored vehicles, um, they're sort of nice and new lots of new stuff and pretty much anything they do is you know really sort of nice and pucker but I've got to admit Tamiya do if you like 132nd scale Tamiya's you know um, zeros the Spitfires um, I think they did a Meteor as well in 132nd scale you know all, all those kits are really really nice to, to, to go off and build I've built a, built a few of them I've done inbox reviews of them and everyone is absolutely gorgeous so if you're after something you know pretty big um, in all honesty um, Hong Kong models as well as I mentioned with their big massive Lancaster I'd love to tackle one of them or I'd love to do an inbox review of one of them just to really sort of see what they're all about but uh, you know it's one of these things it's a massive price tag and if you do build it where are you going to put this absolutely huge model it's the one big downside to them but if you're into that kind of massive scale kind of thing um, they do look really really good and I, I, ooh, I wouldn't mind getting one one day but hopefully um, it's kind of give you sort of a, a general sort of information here I know some of you guys who are new to the hobby and everything you see all these manufacturers you see these shelves full of models and you're like which one should I buy and you look at the box art uh, and it's like wow that looks cool I want to build it um, you know don't do that basically don't judge a book by its cover when it comes to scale modeling you got to put the research and you got to find out what's inside that kit because you can so easily buy um, a nice beautiful looking box right but inside you've got a really pants kit to go off and build so hopefully this has sort of been beneficial and to get you thinking how to go about buying your kits and everything so hopefully you've enjoyed that so until next time my name is Bob Ward and it's Genesis Models and I'll catch you later